We now discuss formulae over first-order languages. We first assume that a first-order language has an ample supply of variables for each sort. This means that given any formula, we can always choose a variable for a sort not used in the formula. We now give the symbols discussed so far in our language syntactical structure so that we may form meaningful strings of symbols. Terms will act like nouns or noun phrases in our language. The definition is as follows. Terms over L are defined recursively from the clauses below. Moreover, each term is assigned a sort, and we write term T has sort A by a colon relation. A, X has sort A if X is a variable of sort A, and B, F applied to T1 to Tn has sort B if F is an operation from the product of A1 to An to B, and Ti is a term of sort Ai for each I. Next, we give the definition of the formulae, which are like statements in our language. We define formulae over L recursively on the clauses below. Moreover, for each formula, phi, we assign a set of free variables denoted f phi phi. 1. Relations. R on term T1 to Tn is a formula when R is a relation of the product A1 to An, and Ti is a term of sort Ai for each I. The free variables of R on T1 to Tn is equal to the variables in the terms Ti. 2. Equality. S equal to T is a formula where S and T are terms of the same sort, and the free variables of S equals to T are the variables used in the terms S and T. 3. Truth. We use a symbol T called truth, and there are no free variables of T. 4. Binary conjunction. The binary conjunction of phi and psi, where phi, psi are formulae, and the free variables of the conjunction of phi and psi is the union of the free variables of phi and the free variables of psi. 5. Existential quantification. There exists x such that phi, where x is a variable and phi is a formula, and the free variables of there exists x such that phi is equal to the free variables of phi with the variable x removed. 6. Falsity. We also use a symbol of an upside-down t called falsity, and it also has no free variables. 7. Binary disjunction. The binary disjunction of phi and psi, where phi and psi are formulae, and the free variables of phi and psi is equal to the union of the free variables of phi and the free variables of psi. 8. Implication. Phi implied psi, where phi and psi are formulae and the free variables of phi implied psi is the union of the free variables of phi and the free variables of psi. 9. Negation. The negation of phi, where phi is a formula, and the free variables of the negation of phi is equal to the free variables of phi. 10. Universal quantification for all x, phi, where x is a variable and phi is a formula, and the free variables of for all x, phi, is equal to the free variables of phi, with the variable x removed. Number 11, infinitary disjunction. The infinitary disjunction of the formulae phi i, where i is a set, phi i is a formula for each i, and the union of the free variables of phi i is finite. And we set this to be the set of free variables for the infinitary disjunction of phi i. Number 12, infinitary conjunction. The infinitary conjunction of phi i where i is a set, phi i is a formula for each i, and the union of the free variables of phi i is finite. And again, we set this to be the set of free variables for the infinitary conjunction of phi i. We characterize the types of formulae in the following way. Atomic formulae are the formulae of types 1 and 2. Horn formulae are those of 1 to 4. Regular formulae are those of 1 to 5. Coherent formulae are those of 1 to 7. First order formulae are those of 1 to 10. Geometric formulae are those of 1 to 7 and 11. And infinitary first order formulae are those of 1 to 12. We will look more closely at the distinction of formulae when we discuss categorical semantics in a later video.